Jackie Robinson can be summed up in this World Series moment, a point of balance between the trail he blazed to get here and the one he would blaze afterwards. Robinson dashed boldly towards home plate with creaky knees and a steel resolve, a blend of bravado and precision that made him a legend and a pioneer. He would be called safe, even though he did not feel safe in America, and he would spend his future doing something about that. September 28, 1955. It is game one of the World Series. Yankees vs. Dodgers for the fifth time in a decade, and Jackie Robinson's Brooklyn teams had been on the losing end of all four prior series. The Yankees are up 6-4 in the eighth, with two outs and pinch hitter Frank Keller at the plate. Robinson bounces around at third base. Given the situation, there were not many compelling reasons for Robinson to steal home. His team was losing on the road, he was 90 feet away from home, and Keller was having a solid season in his part-time role. Using today's advanced metrics, we know that the Dodgers had a 10% chance to win this game. A successful steal of home would improve their odds a bit to 16%, but getting caught would set them back to 6%. Robinson was also 36 years old and had only 12 stolen bases on the season. Attempting a straight steal of home in this situation with those knees, calling that daring would be an understatement. But the information at Robinson's disposal gave him advantages that data could not quantify. When you are a pioneer just by your presence, you are the small sample. You are the impossible. Jackie was unafraid. Robinson's reckless abandon on the diamond actually had a poetry, precision, and intelligence to it. It was contained and targeted and stood out amongst giants. A mark of magnetic excellence is that when you perform, all eyes find you on the field. Robinson always appeared to be playing in fast motion. He was the star of a silent movie, surrounded by those with the privilege to speak and permission to proceed at their own pace. The Yankees Hall of Fame battery of Yogi Berra and Whitey Ford met at the mound and discussed the possibility that Robinson would take off, but they didn't change their approach. Ford, a lefty, defiantly pitched from the windup, adding significant time to the delivery. Age and injury limited Robinson athletically, so when he took off for home, he ran at 25.3 feet per second. This would be below average speed in today's game, but it was not about his speed as much as his timing and technique. In the art of the stolen base, the difference between out and safe depends on your read of the pitcher, your lead, your jump, and the precision of your path to the next base. Often overlooked is the final determining factor, your slide. Robinson used the form of the hook slide, a technique that is rarely seen in the modern game and is designed to minimize the surface area available to tag. Robinson was all kinetic energy and flailing limbs on the base path, then on his slide, as precise as a surgeon, his toe finding the sliver of plate that Berra gave him. Sliding is not just about getting somewhere faster, it is about being evasive, and Robinson's boldness was perfectly complemented by his masterful technique. That is why he was safe. Yogi Berra, of course, disagreed. He's safe, says the ump. He's out, says Yogi Berra, and brother is Yogi Hoppin'. And he maintained for decades that Robinson was out on this play. Robinson went on to have a so-so statistical World Series, but he became a world champion when the Dodgers won the series in seven. After four World Series defeats, Brooklyn finally took down its nemesis. As Rachel Robinson once said, those Yankees were impossible. Yet Robinson always seemed to take on the impossible, challenging our nation to open its arms wider to include all Americans under the blanket of equality. His 1947 MLB debut represented the integration of the first major American institution and established his mark as a groundbreaker. And even when his playing career ended a year after the 1955 World Series, Robinson entered baseball retirement with the enthusiasm of a rookie. He marched in the streets. He engaged and debated leaders. Always that same blend of boldness and consideration that he flashed for those 90 feet in the Bronx. Robinson penned letters challenging everyone from presidents to civil rights leaders. Malcolm X, JFK, Ford, Nixon, and MLK all heard from him directly. He was as aggressive in his correspondence as he was on the base pass, and they sometimes responded defensively. He would be an inspiration for the Little Rock Nine who risked their lives to be the first to integrate a school, and to so many more, and he racked up so many firsts 
He was the first black VP of a major American corporation at Chock Full of Nuts. He was the first black nationally syndicated columnist at the New York Post and the first black bank owner in Harlem by his forming of the Freedom National Bank of Harlem. He had long concluded that if you want to have the power to change, you must be a decision maker in hiring and corporate policy. You must control the narrative in the media and you must have the ability to source your own wealth and funds, all systems that bring tremendous influence in America. My introduction to Jackie Robinson's story came from reading a biography about him in my early teens. It allowed me to see him as more than just a ball player. He understood what his baseball career meant, but he also believed that one should never stop running the bases for justice. By the time I was 20 and a viable candidate for the MLB draft, I met Rachel Robinson at an event in New York City. It was like meeting royalty, and it reflected how a kid born in 1970 could still feel his impact decades after he broke the color barrier. The still photo of Robinson sliding into home on that September day hangs on my wall at home. It is one of those rare snapshots that refuses to stand still. It has always been alive and dynamic, capturing the essence of a man instead of simply his performance, his tenacity and smarts, his precision and freedom, his hope and his razor thin margin for error, the incredibly high stakes he faced throughout his journey. Despite Barra and Ford knowing his capabilities, Despite the rules of high percentage baseball, Robinson still surprised them, just as his every success surprised those who believed him incapable because of the color of his skin.